Now let's take a look at the idea of water balances. This corresponds with the reading on the website that's focused on water balances that was completed by the U.S. Geological Survey. And we want to talk about a couple of different things here. First of all, the basic equation for water balances, the concept that mass is equal to volume, and then introduce the idea of the control volume. A few questions you might keep in mind as we go through this is, are the following. Why does the principle of conservation of mass work for water balance analyses? And the reason that I phrase it like that is because when we work with water, generally we work with volumes, not with mass. Another question, is it really important that the density of liquid and solid water changes with temperature? Especially when we're thinking about conservation of mass. And what is a control volume? That's the final question. So one of the things to remember about mass balances and rates is just this, when we carry out water balance analyses is that water is incompressible. It has a rough, roughly constant uh, mass per volume ratio. Uh, generally that's taken to be one kilogram per liter or 1,000 kilograms per liter cubed. And what that means then is that because mass equates to volume, we can carry out the mass balance approach in terms of volumes. So in general, if we think about it in terms of kilograms or mass, the change in storage, delta S, is equal to inputs minus output, outputs. This is conservation of mass. And what it suggests is that the mass of inputs minus the mass of outputs in a volume, a given volume, and this will be our control volume, and I'll define that in a minute, will be equal to the changes in storage. So if outflows, are greater than inflows, our change in storage will be negative. We'll decrease the amount of mass inside of a volume. If our inflows are greater than outflows, our change in storage will be positive. We'll increase the amount of mass. And if inflows equal outflows, or steady state as it's called, the change in mass will be equal to zero. But because mass and volume are essentially the same thing when we talk about water, remember, Water is a standard substance for a lot of different things, including temperature. When we carry out mass balance analysis of the control volume, in terms of uh, commonly used rate and length units, we can substitute volume for mass. Although water changes its density a little bit with temperature, if you look very carefully at the scale on the left-hand side here, this is the, the uh, density of water over a range of temperatures from negative 10 degrees centigrade to 50, we see first of all that the maximum density of water is achieved at about 4 degrees centigrade. But look over on the left hand side. We're talking about a very, very small change in the density of water from in its liquid phase. And so we're talking really about a, a density change that's negligible with respect to being able to use volume as a substitute for mass. The basic equation then looks like this for conservation of mass. Input minus output is equal to change of storage within a frame of reference over a given time step. This is important because the time step is important. It could be a minute, it could be a year, it could be a century, it could be a millennium. Uh, the uh, frame of reference is important because we have to know what boundaries the system has so that we can begin doing essentially an accounting process for mass and then again mass uh, volume as a surrogate or as an equivalent for mass. If we divide that through the uh, mass balance equation which is the change in storage delta S is equal to inflows minus outflows, we can divide those through by a time step and by that I mean a duration of time during which we are carrying out analyses we change our masses, or in this case our volumes, to rates. So in this case then, the change of storage with time okay, is equal to the inflow with time minus the outflow with time. And here we're again, we're thinking about inflows and outflows as masses or volumes. And when we put the, the uh, change in time on the bottom over which the analysis is taking place, and it's the same for all three terms, what we come with, up with is then a new equation that says that the rate of change of storage is equal to the inflow rate minus the outflow rate. 
In order to do this, we have to apply it to the control volume. We use a, speci a specific time step, and we assume that inflow and outflow are conserved quantities, and they could be mass or energy, or in this case, volume. What's a control volume? It's an accounting unit. It's a bounded region that separates processes of interest from those that we can ignore. It provides a frame of reference cons for considering effects of inputs and outputs. So let's take a look at the two flower pots below. The center flower pot is the flower pot that we're interested in. We may be interested in finding out first how much water goes out, how much water comes in, and how much is actually stored in the pot. And we may be interested in that to make sure that our flower has enough water to keep it healthy and growing. So that means a few things. If we put a dotted line represent our, our, our control volume around the flower pot itself, the cloud, uh, which represents our, one of our inputs, okay, water from the cloud passes through the boundary of the control volume, near the dotted line, and lands inside of the flower pot. On the other hand, when there's too much water for the soil to hold, what happens is that water drains from the bottom of the pot through, again, our conceptual control volume. And so we have inputs and outputs. We have a certain amount of water stored in the control volume at the beginning of the inputs and outputs. And our change in storage will be equal to the difference in inputs and outputs over the time of interest that we examine not only the inputs and outputs, but also the changes in storage. So our control volume then, in this case, separates the world we care about, which is anything that's coming into the, the uh, flower pot, anything that's leaving the flower pot, from random inputs represented by the cloud off to the left, it really isn't affecting our flower pot, and random outputs, which would be outputs from, say, another flower pot that's really not part of our system. So the control volume, in this case, surrounds our one pot that gives us a, uh, and gives us a frame of reference for carrying out this accounting of volumes. In the context of watershed analysis, a watershed boundary serves as our control volume. There are many complexities associated with determining whether the how far deep into the soil the control volume should go and how far into the atmosphere it should go. Each kind of control volume isolates the system for a specific kind of analysis. So for example, if our control volume considers only the soil, then we consider everything above the soil so surface and below the soil surface to be something from which or into which water from our system is draining. In order to carry out an analysis of that kind, though, we have to understand the concept of the control volume and how to use it in the context of the water balance equation. So if we think of Earth as a series of control volumes, looking at the hydrologic cycle, first it's important to remember that there's a finite and unchanging quantity of water. We have and will have the same amount of water on the surface of the Earth uh, for as long as we, as it matters to us. Remember too that it's a global scale, endless recirculatory process that moves water from one compartment to another. Uh, conceptually, the Earth is a linked set of storage, storages. Uh, the cycle consists of movement between storages, the surface, the subsurface, and the atmosphere, and the oceans. And the storage can be in any phase that water assumes, whether it's a gas, liquid, or solid. So when we look at the surface of the Earth and we think about carrying out a water bu budget analysis for the surface of the Earth, as we might do if we're looking, for example, at global warming or global climate change, it's important to remember that uh, the control volume approach applies here as well as uh, to a smaller watershed like Allen Creek or Hunter Creek here in the uh, Truckee Meadows.